Okay, so here is the first idea that I have for remedying things. Instead of modifying anything, I've added this uh, flexible, pretty flexible. I'd like it to be a little less stiff, but for now, this might just be a proof of concept. The router is set at zero. That's the downside of this, is I can't see the bit as well. I can sort of see it underneath. Adding LEDs might make that a better thing. We'll see. Um, but for now, we're going to uh, see if this helps. If my suspicion is correct, s cutting off the upper flow and trapping the sawdust so that it has to stay with the router or stay near the bit or with the shoe should help get it up into the dust collector or up into the shop vac. Also, the fan on the router sucks downwards and blows and spreads stuff around. So, this is all theory. It may be a complete bunk. We'll see. Okay, that was much better. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there is some dust, but it's barely any by comparison. Uh, it's much better, much improved. So I like this. I like this a lot. I need to come up with a way to make this stay put safely. And I'm also going to try to find some that's a little softer, a little squishier. Um, let's raise this up a bit. I think this is my best bet. I will do nothing to modify the shoe, I don't think. Um, there is a little left in the trough, but it's not that much. And I'm willing to concede to that just a little bit. Um, I'm not sure that opening the hole is going to help because right now the there's already more intake square uh, surface area than what the hose uses. Let me zoom back out here. There's already the amount of opening is more than half m m higher. It's more than 150 percent of the hose. The hose is like a two inch inner diameter and I've got a two inch hole on the bottom and an inch and a three quarters. I think it's actually a two and a quarter inch hole on the bottom and an inch and three quarters. So I've got four inches essentially. It's almost, it's, it seems to basically around double the surface area, the opening area. So I don't think that the suction is being restricted any. I think it's just a matter of there's so much chaos of a spinning bit and dust flying all over heck that it's it's hard to catch it all. Um, the best thing I can do is contain it. And this thing, it's pretty stretchy, you see, but it takes a fair bit of force to get it that low. It's not too bad. It's not enough to make me worry about the structure of the Dutch port. It's the, the, the shoe is sturdy enough for it. But I would love a little bit more flexibility. And I've seen some that's that uses a thinner a thinner membrane. This stuff is fairly thick and it's got a fair amount of resistance. I've seen some that's thinner um, and if I can find some that's clearer um, that would be even better but I'm skeptical of that because this stuff started out as clear as the polycarb so I may just have to live with it not being. So another thought I have is I have to watch that I don't impede the bit changes and getting at the router collet. There's another factor that I haven't mentioned too much is I designed my holder, my router holder so that I could move the router up and into a full inch just in case I have some really long bit and I needed the clearance. Because right now you can see this bit, I don't know if you can see it, but the bit is a very long bit and it's already hanging below the, the clearance here. So that's my sort of insurance. I have another longer bit than that that could potentially give me fits there. So. I built in the ability to move the router up. Now, I may never need to. It may never be required. But I'd like to avoid 
making something I built into the system unusable so early on. So I'm wandering around my head in this, trying to come up with how I can deal with this. There's one option is it sits attached up here somehow and with maybe a way to hold it up so I can, I can change bits or leave it down here, which might be easiest. Because there's enough room for the router to fit in there. There's, it's almost an inch, almost a full inch in diameter larger. So maybe just popping it right there and holding it and making it so it stays there. Um, glue it down, silicone, something. And then the router just falls into it. I think, I don't know, I think the, the seal is possibly vital, but maybe not as vital. It might be fine. So. That's test number two. I'm fine with it. I'm considering that almost perfect success to me because there's very little dust here. I get more dust off the table saw and I'm happy with my saw, my table saw's dust collection. I get more dust off my miter saw and I'm very happy with my miter saw's dust collection. I can be happy with what, what, it, what little dust ends up here and it seems to be big pieces. It's not a cloud. I saw no clouds. I even tried, I plunged pretty fast to try. Um, I also find this only happens when I'm feeding super fast. I was, I was driving it around at an eighth inch depth at 300 inches a minute. And it was spitting out a little bit, but I can live with that. So, I think we're going to keep it simple and find a way to mount this little bit to that little bit and hope that this distance isn't too short. So that's the other part is finding a happy medium here, which is why I'd like to find some other hoses. If I can get a more flexible hose, this could go further. This could extend further. So we're going to keep an eye out. But I'm going to call that the win. That was really good. Okay. Thanks for watching.